When you're calibrating an air blast sprayer, a lot of people will calibrate the output, they'll calibrate their travel speed, but very few people think to calibrate the air, and it's an air blast sprayer, it's very important. But what's difficult about calibrating the air is you can't see it. Here's a simple trick using ribbons tied to the deflectors, hopefully you have them, and the nozzle bodies in the orchard or in the high bush blueberries, grapes, whatever your crop, to see where your air is going. So 25 centimeter or 10 inch ribbons are all you need. Uh, I use actual ribbon, not flagging tape, because some sprayers will blow so hard that it'll stretch the flagging tape, or they may break down depending on where your intake is and get sucked in the intake and you get confetti. But 25 centimeter or, or 10 inch lengths are enough. Tie them to the top two nozzle bodies and the bottom two nozzle bodies, as well as finding a way to attach them to the deflectors. I used to drill holes, growers don't like that. Now you can just use duct tape. As soon as they're tied on, we're going to put the sprayer in the orchard and turn on the air. It's going to show us where the center point of each nozzle is aiming. But we have to bear in mind, the spray doesn't come out straight like the ribbon. The spray comes out on an angle, usually about 80 degrees, maybe a little less. And that's going to help us decide, do we need the top nozzle on? Do we need the lowest most nozzle on? Maybe we need to make a small change to the nozzle body, change its angle ever so slightly, to change where the spray is going to come out. You can usually go about 15 degrees in each direction without turning off the roll-off, so it's safe to do. You can see that the top deflectors are set a little high. You're overshooting the tree. It's okay to do that a bit because it's at the top of the tree that the wind is most likely to blow your spray off course. But we can afford to lower these a little bit. The bottom deflectors, they're kind of low. There's no reason to be spraying the trunk unless you're doing some sort of dormant oil or a drench. So we're going to raise those up until the spray is just getting the bottom of the canopy of the tree. So we saw that the top two deflectors are aimed up kind of high. They're overshooting the trees a great deal. It's okay if they overshoot a bit, in fact they should. That's where the wind's going to steal most of your spray and you'd rather overshoot a bit than undershoot. Plus if you're on a slope or the sprayer's doing this, you want to make sure you always hit the top of the tree. So we'll start by dropping those deflectors. Remember these aren't nozzles, these are deflectors. They're going to bounce and channel the air to the top of the tree. The first nozzle we're going to use is in this position. So we can afford to flatten these out a little based on what we saw with the ribbons. Now we've also ribboned the nozzle bodies. So we have a sense of where the center point of each spray is. And this top nozzle we saw was pretty much spraying up into space. A good rollover will go about 15 degrees off center before it clicks and before it starts to shut off. So we're going to aim the top nozzle down a little bit. Remember that was just the center point. The spray is going to come out at about an 80 degree angle. So we're still going to get a lot higher up and the air is going to help us get it there. The next nozzle, we're also going to aim down a little bit based on what we saw with the ribbons. These are good. Down at the bottom, we saw the bottom nozzle is pretty much spraying into the ground. Even though the apples are going to drop these boughs at some point in the season, this next nozzle up, spraying at 80 degrees, is going to be more than sufficient to hit them. And we can confirm that with water sensitive paper later on. But we did see that this bottom deflector needs to come up. That's not only going to channel the air, it's going to compress it into the canopy. Help that spray penetrate a little better. There we go. And that lines up. As the season progresses and the boughs do drop, we'll want to adjust these to compensate for that. So once the deflectors are in place and we have some sense of which nozzle should be on or off, it's time to see how much air we need to get into the canopy. 
A common mistake is that a grower will expect that cloud of product in the next alley is an indication that they're doing a good job. But really, the spray shouldn't go much further than the center of the target. In this case, in an apple tree, it really shouldn't go much further than the trunk. And when you consider that the air carries the pesticide, where the air goes, the pesticide's going to go. And a nice way to know if we're using too much or not enough is to tie, again, about a 25 centimeter or 10 inch ribbon on the far side of your target. Now in this case, we're going to put one high up in the tree, one about halfway, and one down near the bottom. We're going to do that in at least two trees. Then the grower is going to drive by at the speed that they normally drive with their air at the setting they're used to having it at, and we're going to watch these ribbons. If the ribbon stands straight out, that means the spray is blowing right through the target. And worse than that, the leaves are being flattened out with the air, and the spray is going to skip right over the top. If they don't move at all and just hang limp, then we're not getting enough air into the tree to push the air that's in there out and replace it with spray. What we'd like to see is them just waft a little as the sprayer goes by. If we don't like what we see, if they stand straight out, we have to find a way to lower that fan speed. These ribbons should be up in your orchard or your vineyard all year long. As the tree or the grapes grow and fill, you're going to see your requirements for air change. So you should always keep an eye on these ribbons to see if you need to make changes to your calibration. Plus, they're great indicators if your sprayer is overcoming any wind in the orchard or, or in the vineyard. If you don't see them move in the direction they should move in, you might as well stop spraying because you're not doing any good. So we saw how using a high fan gear in this case with such a big canopy and lots of density was enough to get those ribbons to waft. What happens when we use those air settings in raspberry? We've tied our ribbons as we indicated earlier. 10 inches, 25 centimeters, and we'll see if they stand out straight with too much air or just waft again like they did in the apple. So we saw most of them stood straight out as the spray went by. In fact, you could see the entire cane structure bow right over. One of the rims got snagged on some thorns, but it was really obvious to see that was way too much air. So what choice do we have? Some sprayers, you can put the fan in a lower gear. If that's not enough, we can do something called gear up, throttle down. What that means is, if you have a standard air blast sprayer, that is not an air shear system, but a conventional radial sprayer, and you're not using a centrifugal pump, that is you're using a piston or a diaphragm pump, you can bring the tractor the next gear up and throttle back until you have the same driving speed and that'll slow the RPMs on your PTO, in turn slowing your fan rotation, but it doesn't affect your pressure, so there's no need to recalibrate. The tachometer on your tractor may have a symbol showing where the engine's RPMs translate to a PTO speed of 540 RPMs. That's the typical speed. This tractor also has an economy mode where the PTO will spin at 540 RPMs but the engine speed doesn't work as hard to do it. Your goal is to gear up and throttle down to reduce the PTO RPMs from 540 to a lower speed but not so much to cause the tractor to lug. If done correctly the engine RPMs will also drop, saving fuel and maintaining the same ground speed. You can see this tractor's engine speed has been reduced by 200 RPMs using the gear up throttle down method, so the PTO is spinning at less than 540 RPMs and so is the fan. If the ribbon stands straight out, there's too much air. Here's some ways you can reduce it. You can reduce fan speed using the fan gearbox. If there is no fan gearbox, reduce PTO RPMs using the gear up throttle down method. If that's not possible, drive a little faster. But be sure to increase your spray output to compensate and check your spray coverage with water sensitive paper. If the ribbon doesn't move, there's not enough air and you need more. You can increase fan speed using the fan gearbox. 
If that's not possible, drive a little slower, but be sure to decrease your spray output to compensate and check your spray coverage with water-sensitive paper. The problem may also be that the crop canopy needs pruning. An air blast sprayer can only do so much, and of course you may be trying to spray into the wind, in which case wait until the weather improves.